Hey there, tarot cuties. Welcome, welcome back to another reading with me, the Empress of Fortune. I'm so excited and grateful that you're here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Today, we're going to be talking about what would a tarot reader tell them about you? So this is going to be for any type of relationship, not just romantic relationships. Whichever pile you intuitively are drawn to, that is going to be the pile for you. We're gonna go through all four piles and the timestamps for each of them will be in the description box below. Make sure if you would like to skip over the identifiers portion that you click whatever pile reading. There will be two timestamps for each pile. There will be a timestamp for the identifiers, which is to help those who want a little bit of extra confirmation to confirm that it is in fact their correct pile. And then there will be the actual timestamps for the actual reading. So if you'd like to skip over the identifiers, just make sure that you click the timestamp for the reading itself. So for pile one, we are using the sun and moon tarot. For pile two, we have the wild unknown tarot by Kim Kranz. For pile three, we have the tarot of the spirit. And for pile four, we have the murder of crows tarot. I thought it was interesting when I unboxed all of these that each of them have a black background. I don't know what that's about, but I just thought that was kind of interesting, so I thought I would mention it. Anyways, I, again, am so grateful that you chose to spend some time with me. Make sure you use your intuition if you need to pause the video to take a little bit of extra time to choose your pile. And also, you may have messages in more than one pile, especially if you're asking about more than one person. But other than that, let's go ahead and let's get into it. I'll see you guys at your reading. Hey there, Pile One. If you chose the Sun and Moon Tarot, then we're going to get your identifiers out right now. If you'd like to skip this portion, if you're already very confident that this is in fact your pile, then there's another timestamp down below in the description box that says Pile One Reading. So you can definitely go and click that if you like. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me put these off to the side for now. And let's see, spirit, pile one. We're asking the question, what would a tarot reader tell them about you? So the people who chose the sun and moon tarot, who are the people who chose the sun and moon tarot? What do they have that resonates with them in these identifiers? So while I'm doing this, make sure you like this video and you subscribe to my channel. When you like the video, it helps the video to spread so people who may need to find it can have it on their YouTube homepage. And when you subscribe, it makes you and I more connected so that my readings will be more attuned and more accurate to you. Is there anybody else in Pile One Spirit? Anybody else in Pile One? All right. So the way that these identifiers work is that at least one of the things on one of these slips should be really significant to you somehow, or it could have just shown up in your life in the past couple of weeks. So let's say that there is like a food that comes out. That food could be like your favorite food, right? Or it could be that you just ate one of those things recently. So we've got Ted Mosby here. Ted Mosby is the main character of How I Met Your Mother, played by Josh Ratner. He's on the search for his love of his life. Catfish, the TV show, Neve Shulman and Cammie Crawford. So Neve and Cammie are the hosts of Catfish, but you could have also seen them in like a different context, either of them. For so for example, I just saw Cammie Crawford outside of the context of Catfish like yesterday. Um, she was in this post that I had seen on Reddit where somebody had posted something about the Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendar and she was one of the models on there so she I didn't see her in the context of catfish but like I did see her so that's just an example for you so like maybe you saw Neve on like Dancing with the Stars or on Instagram or maybe you actually like watched catfish or maybe catfish is your favorite show something like that painting so that could be like the act of painting 
That could be like you recently saw a painting that really moved you. Maybe you're painting your house or your barn or something like that. Rules by Kill You Manti. That's a song. The Good Place. That's a TV show starring Kristen Bell and Jamila Jamil and some other people. Ted Danson. Interesting. No, I just said Ted Danson probably because I saw Ted Mosby, but T Ted Danson is in The Good Place. Um... Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So that could be in your big three or your Venus, so sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign. Monaco. Girlfriends, that's a TV show starring Tracy Ellis Ross. The Joker by Steve Miller Band. Jamaica. Bear Claw. So that could be the pastry, but it could also be the character from New Girl, played by Josh Gad. Um, Lights by Journey. That's a song. And Curb Your Enthusiasm is coming through as well because I did say Ted Danson, and as soon as I said that, I thought about Curb Your Enthusiasm because he's one of like the recurring characters on there. And also, he is... Why did I think of that? Why did I just think of that? Oh, Josh Gad. <laughs> Josh Gad um, also has a role on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And so for Bear Claw to come out, he's played by Josh Gad. So Curb Your Enthusiasm is coming out a little bit. A Fine Romance by Judith Sills, PhD. That's a sociology book about courtship. Matthew McConaughey, actor. Annoying. Maybe you had a really annoying day the other day, or somebody called you annoying, or maybe you called somebody else annoying. Philadelphia. Or quite a few locations coming out here. Blue or blues. So blue, the color, also makes me think of Blue Ivy, Carter. And then also blues music, blues clues. BC is coming through as well. Blue, like I said, Blue's Clues, Blue Abby Carter, Bear Claw, BC. So BC, for some reason, is coming through. That could be somebody's initials. Ring. So that could be like The Ring, the horror movie, Ring Camera, an actual ring on your finger. Maybe somebody was like, I'll give you a ring, like a phone call. Hidden Figures, that's a movie. Starring Janelle Monae, Octavia Spencer, and Taraji P. Henson. Tea Ceremony. So that could be like you have a tea ritual. It is also supposed to be like the Chinese tea ceremony. But you may just like drink tea every day. That could be your own tea ritual. Fourth of July, Independence Day. So that's the Independence Day in the United States. But maybe like if your country has an Independence Day, the date of that day is like really important to you or something. Pranks. Punked. So pranks. Um, and maybe you like to do pranks. Maybe somebody did a prank on you recently. Punked is a TV show that Ashton Kutcher used to have where he would prank celebrities. Satsuma. Nobody's Supposed to Be Here by Deborah Cox. That's a song. Cardi B. So CB now instead of BC, but CB. So those two letters seem to be coming through. Carrie, that is supposed to be the um, movie. I guess it is also like a Stephen King book. I don't really know. Sewing kit. Maybe you like to sew. Maybe you just got a sewing kit. Maybe you had to repair something recently. Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. That's a movie, but it's also a book. The movie's on Netflix. Lemongrass. Barney Stinson, another main character from How I Met Your Mother. So Ted and Barney, they're very close friends. Barney is played by Neil Patrick Harris. He's kind of like a womanizing character. Cheers, drink to that by Rihanna. They do drink a lot on that show, How I Met Your Mother. They spend most of their time hanging out at a bar. Energy by Drake. 
I was trying to think of the name of the bar, but I forgot what the name of the bar is. Um, if you know, put it in the comments. Haterade. So somebody's sipping on some Haterade. Also Gatorade, of course. Um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Book or movie. Sassafras, Cypress, and Indigo by Intazaki Shanje. It's a book. Pecan Pie. Some people say Pecan Pie. Throat Chakra. So you could be clearing out your throat chakra. You could be having some issues where it's a little bit blocked recently. Something like that. Mike's Mike on YouTube. That's another YouTuber. He likes to do a lot of recaps, like TV show and movie recaps. Love him. Quarter. So that could be like a quarter, physical coin quarter. Sometimes it also makes me think of the French Quarter in New Orleans. Yellow Jackets. That's a TV show on Showtime, I want to say. What About Your Friends by TLC. I Don't Want to Wait by Paula Cole. Both of those are songs. Ron and Tammy from Parks and Rec. Tammy 1 or Tammy 2. Honey Bee by The Head and the Heart. That's a song as well. Honey Bee. Could you imagine where our lives would be? So yeah, there's like some bee energy coming out. Again, the letter B is coming through very strong, but Honey Bee and Yellow Jackets, both, you know, obviously types of bees. Um, Splinter by Spill Tab. That's a song. Usman from 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance Hive stand up. <laughs> I just said Hive, so that's funny. Um, this Charming Man by Stars. That's a cover of a song by the Smiths. Heard that in a Barnes and Noble one day. It was good. Las Vegas. I think that means like the meadows or something in Spanish. Um, Location by Khalid. That's a song. Send me your location, let's... Okay, um, Rip Girls. That's a DCOM Disney Channel original movie about girls who surf. American Horror Story Season 1, Murder House. Kimberly from 90 Day Fiance. So Kimberly and Usman, they actually were a couple for a while. I think that they did get engaged at some point, but it didn't work out. Footloose by Kenny Loggins. That's a song. Footloose. Work From Home by Fifth Harmony. So maybe you really like that song. You also could just work from home yourself. Bluebird by Miranda Lambert. That's a song. Bluebird by Charles Bukowski is a poem. Or maybe you just like saw a bluebird in real life. Um, what is this? Bracelet. So two bees back to back. Interesting. Maybe you have like a special bracelet. Maybe you just bought a bracelet. Something like that. Dorito Loco Tacos. Doctor Strange from Marvel. So that's two D's back to back. Hmm. Okay. Baskin Robbins. So this could be like Carol Baskin or Tony Robbins, or it could be just like the ice cream store. Baskin Robbins. I've got a lot of identifiers here today. This is Build a Bear. That's a place in the mall where you go to make a stuffed animal. Bon Iver. <laughs> A-U-H-E-C, ate up all their cake. Two more bees back to back. Oklahoma. So that could be the place or it could be like the play. I think it's a musical, Oklahoma. Misa Misa from Death Note. One of the main characters from Death Note, the anime. West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin. I'll add Togo in there as well. Send me your location. It's... Okay, number seven. So that could be the month of July, um, which would be Cancer and Leo energy. You could have seven people in your family. You could live on 7th Street, the 7th floor of your building, apartment number seven, something like that. 
Honey Kuka, the medicine remix. So honey and bees are coming through really strongly. We have honey and we have honey bee. We have honey bee, we have yellow jackets, that kind of thing. So that's interesting. The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. Somebody might be named Kenny. We've got two Kennys here, Kenny Loggins and Kenny Rogers. 1894 by Amber Mark. Put that right there. That's a song. Bless the Hearts. That's an animated TV show. Where Are You Going by Dave Matthews Band. That's a song. Where are you going? Helena by My Chemical Romance. That's another song. Foundations by Kate Nash. Another song. Thursday night, everything's fine, except you got that look in your eye when I'm telling a story. You find it boring, you're thinking of something to say. All right, um, Give Me Something Real by Ashford and Simpson. It's another song. Go along with it, then drop it. <laughs> it's funny, karaoke came out because I was like, really wanting to continue singing Foundations by Kane Ash, and then karaoke comes out, so. Yeah, okay, let's see. Blueberries, so yeah, we got blue bird, blueberries, and just blue, blues. So somebody's favorite color could be blue, for sure. The Gift album, Beyonce. And it's funny because I was just thinking about like saying Blue Ivy again, and then I didn't. But Beyonce and Blue Ivy, they're coming through pretty strongly, so you might be part of the Beehive. Breaking Free by Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens from High School Musical. Morris Chestnut, very handsome actor. What's this one? George Clooney, another very handsome actor. It's interesting how a lot of these are kind of coming out in doubles. Anthony Kiedis, Remy Wolf. So Anthony Kiedis is a lead singer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Remy Wolf is a solo artist. She has a song called Anthony Kiedis. Um, and then when I just said like things are coming out in doubles, it made me think about doubles like from Trinidad, like the food. Um, okay. Linkin Park. That's a band. Gordon Parks. Ooh. Okay. So Parks coming through as well very strongly because we did have Ron and Tammy Parks and Recreation right here. Then we had Lincoln Park and then we have Gordon Parks. So something to do with a park. Or somebody's name could be Park. Last name could be Park or Parker or something like that. Um, Tina Belcher. She is one of the daughters on the show Bob's Burgers. The Postal Service. That is a band. That could also be like USPS if you had to go and pick up or mail something recently. Clumsy by Fergie. Clumsy cause I'm falling in love. So in love with you. Speaking of so in love with you, Real Love by Mary J. Blige. Look at that. So yeah, there's like doubles energy coming out. Maybe somebody's twins, something, I don't know. Um, but that's interesting. 8701, the album by Usher. Comes because I'm falling in love. NDA, that stands for non-disclosure agreement. There's also a Megan Thee Stallion song called NDA. Gloria Delgado Pritchett. She's played by Sofia Vergara on Modern Family. Beauty in the Dark by the Isley Brothers and Most Deaf. All right, guys, we've only got like four or five more left of these identifiers. Sweet Love by Anita Baker. Sweet love. The number five. Okay, so that is the month of May. That is Taurus and Gemini energy. All the same things I said for seven. So you could live on the fifth floor, fifth apartment, 
Fifth Street, Fifth Avenue. You could have five people in your family, something like that. Maya Angelou, author, poet, actress. Mexico City. Maybe you ate something spicy because my nose just started itching. Uh, what is this? The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. That's a book. Put that right there. Running out of space over here. Um, okay. We've got romance novel. Okay. The Coldest Winter Ever kind of was like a romance novel. It is, I guess, rather. Chateau Marmont, Hollywood. That also makes me think of the song Chateau by Angus and Julia Stone. Flight 99 by Taku, Matt McWaters, and Masego. All right, guys, here's the last ones. I think it's three more. Key tattoo. So you might have a key tattoo. You might be thinking about getting a key tattoo. The person you're asking about could be um, tattooed with a key or something like that. When You're Good to Mama by Queen Latifah from Chicago. And last but not least, we have Silicon Valley. So that's a TV show on HBO, but obviously it's also like an area of California where all the tech companies have, or many tech companies have their headquarters. Anyway, it's possible that you or the person you're asking about could just generally be a gambler. We did get The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. We also got Las Vegas. So whether or not they've ever been to Vegas, they could just be into gambling, whether that is playing cards, sports betting, whatever that could be. Um, speaking of Barney Stinson also, in the show, How I Met Your Mother did have a gambling addiction, actually. Um, it wasn't like a huge plot point, but it did come up and he was really into like this Chinese game um, that nobody else really understood the rules to, but he would go and play sometimes like in like back rooms in New York <laughs> and his friends would like find him and he would be like, totally basically like strung out not on substances or anything but just like on gambling so yeah um definitely worth mentioning these are all of the identifiers we're about to get into the reading i'm gonna go write these down in my tarot journal if you're interested in getting your own tarot journal i did make one for you guys the link is down in the description below so feel free to check it out but yeah let me go write these down in my tarot journal and i'll see you guys in just a second Hey there, Pile One. Welcome, welcome to your reading. This is what would a tarot reader tell them about you if you picked the Sun and Moon tarot? Then let's get into your cards. This is so exciting. I am so intrigued to find out what would a tarot reader tell them about you. So if you've got a specific person on your mind, then this is what they would hear if they were to ask for a tarot reading on you. We're going to start off with, we've got some oracle, pre-pulled oracle cards here. We've got the everyday oracle, which we're going to use first, then we will get into the tarot, and then we're going to go with this what's the news oracle afterwards. All right, so what would a tarot reader tell the special person on Pile One's mind about Pile One? Let's see. We've got Mercante, so that means merchant. Um, so for some of you guys, you might literally like be in sales. You might be a salesperson of some kind, but this can also just be about somebody who's like very convincing, okay? Or somebody who potentially has ulterior motives. You know, um, that does not necessarily have to be negative and it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody who has ulterior motives is trying to get one over on somebody else but it can mean that they just have like a different or ultimate purpose in mind for the connection that they're not being fully forthcoming with at this point or it could be that they um you might know like for example let's say that you go to a store and you encounter the salesperson who's at the store and they're like oh you know let me know if you need anything blah 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 and then they start like complimenting you right and you know ultimately that like they want to make a sale they want to make the commission if you were to buy something 
but it is still nice to be complimented regardless, right? So they could be very, very nice to you or they might act a certain way towards you, but it is with the ultimate goal or hope that something else comes out of the connection, okay? So for some of you guys, I'm also getting like shipping or drop shipping or um, something to do with boats or postal service or something like that, okay? Did we get the postal service in our identifiers? Let me check on that and see. Oh, it's a little... Yeah, so we did get the postal service actually as part of the identifiers. So yeah, some person here might have like a small business or they might do something that has to do with like the mail a lot. Um, okay, so what else would a tarot reader tell them about you? Oh, Okay, so you know what? I was like kind of reading this from like a weird perspective. I forgot that it was supposed to be like <laughs> telling the other person about you. So they would tell them that you may have some sort of either small business. You might have something to do a lot with the mail. You guys might be sending each other a lot of letters potentially. You might have something to do with shipping. You could be in sales or you could be the type of person who has potentially an ulterior motive um, and all of the things that I said earlier about ulterior motives still apply. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's like something negative, but all right, so let's see what else they would say. So we got falsita. Oh, so I did say that it's not necessarily something negative, but with this, that is definitely like about falsehoods, lies, um, <laughs> representing something maybe that is not fully true right? Um, so yeah, I think that a tarot reader would tell this person that you maybe are conning them or tricking them somehow. And I'm not saying this to like be mean, you know, I'm just literally just reading what the cards say. However, this is very much like maybe giving them the idea that this person maybe should not trust you. Um, or at least not trust you fully, okay? Um, cats themselves, their trust can be kind of hard to earn. You definitely have to earn it. It's not just given freely like a dog's trust is. So I think that they would also tell, a tarot reader would also tell them that you need some time, that they need to take their time getting to know you and that trust is earned. It's not just freely given, okay? So yeah. Um, does that mean that they shouldn't let you in? No, not necessarily, because as you see, this cat is, you know, it's an indoor house cat. It's sitting on this chair. It is sitting there comfortably. So I think that that could also mean that it could take some time to, for you two to get comfortable with each other is what a tarot reader might tell them about you. I think that also tell them that you're very intelligent. Um, some of you guys may be college educated. You might have f even... Um, gone to like a graduate school or professional school that is not necessarily going to apply to everybody. Um, some of you guys might be posing as people who are more educated than you actually are. But the reason why I say that is because the robes that this merchant is wearing, they do kind of look like graduation robes. So some of you guys might have recently graduated. For those of you guys who maybe didn't go to school, didn't finish school, something like that, don't worry. They would definitely still tell the person that you're asking about, the tarot reader would still tell them that you're very intelligent as well. The numbers 13 and four could be important here as well as 79, 80, 12, and 16, and the letter Q. All right, let's get into the tarot. Let's see what the tarot has to say. What would a tarot reader tell them about you? All right, let's see. Oh, okay. So we got, and these came out kind of sideways. So I think that this person is undecided about you and also the energy is a little bit maybe wishy-washy. Um, Queen of Swords here and then Queen of Pentacles, okay? And they're, they are facing opposite directions, meaning like if I were to turn them like this, this one is upside down and this one is right side up. Um, and I am going to kind of read them with this energy because this to me could mean that the tarot reader would tell them that you are not only glamorous, but that you do care a lot about money, 
that is not necessarily a bad thing. You definitely care about your comfort and that you can be hardworking, you can also be hard-headed. Um, you might enjoy taking vacations, you might enjoy traveling a lot, um, and you also, I'm getting Capricorn as well. You know, not everybody obviously is going to have Capricorn placements here, but you might have some somewhere in your chart. And then um, this also is telling me that there's some harshness here, okay? Harshness. Um, this tarot reader, a tarot reader might tell this person that you're asking about that you could be quick to cut other people off. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's reminding me of that line from Bodak Yellow where Cardi says, I'm quick to cut him off, so don't get comfortable, right? Um, so yeah, I think that it's interesting that this idea of like comfort and like letting somebody in definitely keeps coming through because especially back in the old days, like merchants and even now still sales is like a very, um, sales can be a very comfortable way to make a living. You know, you earn commission off of your sales. People who were merchants back in the day, they often made a lot of money and they were able to set themselves and their families up very nicely financially. So um, I think that this person would learn from a tarot reader either that you are very interested in money or maybe that you come from money or that money just is very very important in your life somehow um you might yourself have a lot of money i know that that's not going to apply to every single person who watches this but that you are cunning and you know how to um how to get the money that you're looking for for sure what else would a tarot reader tell them about you We've got justice here. Some of you guys might be interested in the law or in legal professions in some way, shape, or form. Um, but they also would tell your person that karma either is coming for you or has come for you in the past. And that you are the type of person who seeks balance. I'm also hearing retribution as well. Um, that you are the type of person who kind of believes in like an eye for an eye situation, a tooth for a tooth is something that I heard. Um, I don't know if that's the rest of that quote or not, but, um, I'm also getting that you might have some sort of like black and white thinking as well, or at least that's what the tarot reader would say about you, um, that you kind of see things either like like this or like this which I think also goes with this Queen of Swords here in reverse as well too it's like there's not a lot of nuance when it comes to the way that you think and the way that you understand the world you know um it's reminding me also of like a zero-sum game in some ways because it's like I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that but it's basically kind of like when two people are winning, if one person or two people, if two people are playing a game, if one person wins, the other person has to lose. And so there are some games where there can be multiple winners, right? But you, the tarot reader would tell this person that you tend to see things as there, there's always a winner and a loser and that things have to balance out. Um, but I think also, in my personal opinion, you know, people can win in different ways. And so there is not always a super clear winner and a super clear loser, but you might not be the type of person to believe that. And I think that that's what the tarot reader would share with the person that you're asking about. All right, what else would a tarot reader say to them about you? How would a tarot reader describe, tell them about you? We got the Six of Cups here. All right, so the Six of Cups lets me know that you and this person that you're asking about, there's a lot of friendly feelings here. For some of you, and this is not going to apply to all, but for some of you guys, you might know this person from your past, um, but it just seems like there's a lot of genuine enjoyment and pleasure that comes from the relationship between the two of you. And I think that the two of you um, have have fun together. For some of you guys, it's a lot of fun, but for others of you, it's just like regular fun. 
<laughs> I know that sounds silly, but you know, I, I just kind of have to mention that. Um, the tarot reader might tell them that you have like a childlike sense of wonder. Um, I'm hearing also that song now, I Hope You Dance by the Leanne Womack, where she says like, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. And so that makes me think that you guys foster that in each other, or at least that the tarot reader would say that you have that about you. I also think that, well, the word shallow is coming up. So that can mean a couple of things. They could tell, the tarot reader might tell this person that you're shallow. Um, the song also, Lit Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper from A Star Is Born is coming through, as well as just kind of thinking that the emotions here, you guys might have a lot of fun together, but the emotions aren't necessarily that deep to warrant, um, you know, the, the amount of fun that you have is more important maybe than the depth of the emotions that you guys share for each other, okay? And especially with this full moon here, I do think that there are secrets and things that you are not sharing with each other and this person would hear that, you know, there are things about you that they don't know. And also potentially that you may come with a lot of baggage as well. Just thinking about this merchant and all of these, um, you know, things that are like parceled up and wrapped up and kept in the barrels that aren't easy to see, but they're valuable, but they're just not, you know, easy to see and they're not necessarily something that you would come right out with. Um, you'd only reveal them for like the right buyer or for the right person, you know, so definitely the tarot reader would reveal to them that you have some sort of secrets, maybe even a secret life. Um, I'm getting kind of like con man, con woman energy here. And that's obviously not all, of you, not all of you guys are, are like that, but that is worth noting. And it's something that I should say it's coming through. Okay. Um, let's see. What else would a tarot reader tell them about you? We got the two of swords here. Interesting. In reverse, especially. So that is about making a decision possibly without a lot of time to make the decision and also maybe without having all of the information to make that decision um i think that they would tell you i'm hearing that song peace by taylor swift um where she's like i can never give you peace right and um i think that a tarot reader would tell them that about you too and again that's not a bad thing necessarily i think that's something also that like in that same song taylor's trying to convey to her lover or whatever that like you know i can give you all these other things but i can never give you peace and just thinking about taylor swift's life like that's a reality you know there's this whole argument about like how much um of a carbon footprint she has because she has to fly private everywhere because it's like if whenever she's seen out in public, like people would freak out. And that's just how it is, you know, with many celebrities. But, um, you know, I think that her saying that is like her acknowledging the truth of her situation. And I kind of feel like you have something similar going on. Obviously, it's like not the exact same situation, but you're just being able to acknowledge. And I guess the tarot reader also being able to acknowledge the truth of your situation that like you probably would not be able to give this person a peaceful life or a peaceful friendship or peaceful romantic life or whatever. Um, with the Ace of Wands here in reverse, it does kind of make me think of maybe a bad temper. Um, also potentially like laziness. Um, and... For some reason, a lot of music is coming through. Um, fire Burning by Sean Kingston. That song is like, fire burning, fire burning on the dance floor. <laughs> I don't know what that's about at all, but it is coming through. So let's see what, what we get here. Four of Cups, Ten of Wands in reverse, the moon in reverse. I knew the moon was going to come out. And then we've got the King of Pentacles here in reverse. Interesting, the King of Pentacles here in the reverse, like right underneath the Queen of Pentacles. So that's very interesting to me. Okay, so yeah. Um, I think that the tarot reader would tell them that one, you like to lounge. Two, something about boredom, easily bored. Three, um, 
that you don't like to be burdened. And also maybe that you don't like to be a burden to other people as well. And that eventually some of your secrets will be revealed. And also maybe that you're not like the best with money. You like to be comfortable. You like to receive that comfort. And you can be hardworking, but that doesn't mean you're like the best with money. You may not know how to make your money work for you, okay? Uh, definitely, I've talked about, you know, the idea of comfort coming up. And so the word luxury being here on this card is very telling. Um, possibly the tarot reader would tell your person that you are the type of person who kind of likes to have things handed to you, that you like to um, kind of get what you can while doing the least, okay? And I'm thinking now about, I think maybe this was a post that I saw on Twitter, I don't really remember, where some person was saying that, like, they were a designer of, like, airplane parts or something and they spent all this time designing the airplane parts and then they make this catalog and the salesperson facilitates the sale between the engineer or the manufacturer and the actual um airplane producer right the person who actually puts all the parts together so the salesperson all they did was show the buyer the manual and explain a few things in the manual. And then once the sale is made, the salesperson gets a whole bunch of money and the actual engineer also gets a good amount of money, but the amount of work that the engineer did compared to the amount of work that the salesperson did is like astronomical. And yet the salesperson I think got paid more than the engineer did just for you know showing the brochure, the pamphlet or whatever and actually like facilitating the sale. So I'm definitely getting like lazy girl job here, lazy boy job here for sure. Not to say that, you know, sales is not a hard thing. It does take, you know, different um, people skills that maybe not everybody has, but I'm definitely getting somebody who likes to get the most for the least, okay? And I think that that's what a tarot reader would tell them about you. Um, with justice being here in the upright, though, I do think that not only is that a fair assessment of you, but also that you do have overall a good heart, even if it's not, yeah, see this Ace of Cups just came out, and I do think overall you have a good heart. I think that that's what the tarot reader would tell them about you. I do think that there is... I'm not going to say like questionable things. I think it's just kind of like you like things the way that you like them. And like I said, there's not a lot of nuance to how you see things and how you see the world. There's also not a lot of depth to it. We talked a lot about shallow and shallowness. They may also say to this person, a tarot reader might also say to this person that you are not attracted to them. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't like you, okay? So I think that there's some interesting dichotomy there. And I'm looking at this water, and it almost looks like there's like, I know it's not really supposed to be cracks in the water here, but like it kind of looks like cracks in the water. Maybe it's supposed to be roots or reflections of these lights or whatever. I really don't know. But it kind of reminds me of some cracks. And so there could be like, um, I'm thinking now about that song Foundations by Kate Nash. Did that come out in the identifiers? Let's check. It did. It did come out in the identifiers. Let me... Yeah, so Foundations did actually come out in our identifiers. And one of the things that she says in that song, the lyrics go, my fingertips are holding onto the cracks in our foundation. And I know that I should let go, but I can't. And every time we fight, I know it's not right. Every time that you're upset and I smile, I know I should forget, but I can't. Um, and the whole song, she goes on to talk about how they kind of like take pleasure in each other's pain and how like these it's like basically a song about like getting the ick <laughs> of 
from your partner who you have been with for kind of a long time and like not only are you getting the ick but like they can all everybody can see that the ick is happening right so um a tarot reader might tell them that about you that even though you like them there are some cracks in the foundations and there are some things that are a little bit ick inducing about them for you and maybe not about you for them but about them for you and so i think that is where this ace of wands come in, comes in because i'm getting this idea of like a non-starter um i'm also getting this idea of just you know the passion is not there and again that's not always a bad thing necessarily it's just like there's emotions there but there's not necessarily passion there um there might not be like actual sexual attraction there and with the ten of wands being here especially in the reverse like this person i think does not like to carry a lot of weight they don't like to maybe pull their own weight they don't like to have a lot of burdens and they don't like to have a lot of stress and so i think if that's something that you help them with if you are able to you know make their life less stressful or less work on them then that is part of the reason why they like you um but if that's the case i also think that the moment that you stop pulling your own weight or pulling their weight actually you stop being kind of like their workhorse or their bull or whatever they're going to maybe not be as interested in you that is what a tarot reader would tell this person about you so let's get into our last oracle cards here we've got what's the news oracle let's see okay so we've got all seeing eye i see everything bitch <laughs> that is so funny um okay so i definitely think a tarot reader would tell them that you're watching them um this could be through social media or just you know in general that you are keeping tabs on them keeping an eye on them um there's also very obviously like egyptian influence in here so this could also be that like you're keeping an eye on them through tarot readings <laughs> just like what you're reading watching right now so a tarot reader might tell them that you are you know doing some tarot readings about them or whatever finding love again interesting okay so a tarot reader i think would tell them that you are interested in finding love again whether or not that is happening with them is questionable right but they definitely would tell your special person that you are interested in finding love again and also i think maybe that if you guys kind of fell off that it is possible to bring this connection back around okay uh, what else would a tarot reader tell them about you don't want it if it's that easy interesting because i've been talking a lot about ease and comfort right um so this is about there is an element of chasing here but i'm not getting that necessarily i'm getting more that um you might be a musician that might be something that the um tarot reader would tell them about you but the tarot reader would also say that you are interested in things that not everybody can have and even though they would also say that you do like ease and comfort i think that they would tell this person that you enjoy getting things easily that other people cannot necessarily have let's see nothing feels better than this so yeah it's like i said they definitely would tell this person that you do like them even if there's not like a total physical attraction there you do still have feelings for them and you guys do still have fun together and i think also that they would tell this person that even though there are hard times, it's not necessarily that this person wants or that you want to give up on the connection. So it is a lot of things about like trying to come back together even after um, the cracks in the foundations have been shown, wanting to maybe repair them if there have been lies or things like that. You know, Justice can also talk about telling the truth. A tarot reader would tell them that the truth will 
set you free, you being the person who's watching this. So like if you are to come forward and be honest about not only your intentions, but about the things that you want in life, then the situation relationship between you guys could work. And I think that those secrets will be revealed eventually if you choose, especially if you, you know, especially if after watching this, you choose to, you have your own free will, so you get to do whatever you want. But what a tarot reader would tell them about you is that honesty needs to happen. I think that the tarot reader would also tell them that you do in some cases kind of like a challenge or you kind of like It's like that whole idea of like fucking and fighting where it's like, you know, you fight and then you come back together and you make up, you know, I think that they might say that you like that. <laughs> the tarot reader might tell them that again, that there is some sort of pocket watching or, or keeping an eye on maybe your cell phone or your finances or something like that. Um, meaning that you are keeping an eye on this other person's phone or you're keeping an eye on this other person's finances or something like that. If the two of you guys are in no contact right now, I do think that a tarot reader would tell them that the possibility of a reconciliation is strong or is just possible just in general. And a tarot reader would also tell your person that you really like how they make you feel. There is a lot of enjoyment in the connection together. As I said before, for some of you guys, especially you guys have a lot of fun together. Um, and I think a tarot reader would be very pleased to be able to tell the person that you're asking about that. All right, y'all, I'm going to leave the reading here. That is what a tarot reader would tell them about you. I know that the perspectives are like a little bit confusing sometimes. I hope that this made sense. If you have any questions, just make sure you leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. It does help the video spread and helps other people who may need to see it to find it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey there, Pile 2. If you chose the Wild Unknown Tarot here, these will be your identifiers and we're going to get into the reading in just a little bit. If you want to skip the identifiers portion, there is another timestamp down below that will say pile to reading and you can go ahead and use that timestamp to go straight to the part with the cards. Let's go ahead and see. Who is this reading for? So the way that these work is that at least one of the things that comes out on any of these slips should be significant to you somehow, or it could have just shown up in your life recently. Um, so for example, and this slip is like not in there yet. I am going to add it <laughs> because it's been showing up in my life a lot, but it's not in here yet. So for example, oh, like the past four or five days, a lot of people have been talking to me about gumbo just like randomly. I don't know why. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know anything about it. But gumbo has come up at least like four times over the past few days in my life. So if, for example, a slip that said gumbo were to come out of this lip bowl, then that would be how I would know that this reading is for me. Okay. Um, another option would be like if gumbo were my favorite food and gumbo came out of this lip bowl, then that would be how I would know that this reading is for me. So that's just an example. Um, I'm not sure, there's a lot of stuff that's on these slips. There are so many of them. So yeah, definitely, you know, watch through and see if any of these grab your attention. So yeah, let's see. Spirit, pile two. Who's in my pile two people who chose the Wild Unknown Tarot? Who is in pile two? Who is in pile two, Spirit? Who's my pile two? While I'm doing this, go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up. It will help the video to spread farther to the people who need to see it. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you can see all my new videos and it will also make you and I more connected so that my readings will be more accurate for you and more fine tuned to your energy. Anybody else in Pile 2 Spirit? Pile 2.
let's see. All right, we've got roller coaster. So maybe you really love roller coasters, maybe you rode one recently, or you might be making plans to go to like a theme park or something. Chess, the board game. The number 77. That could also be for like the year 1977. We've got Swing Swing by All American Rejects. That's a song. Bali, Indonesia. Vietnam. So Southeast Asia is coming through. Hey Arnold, that is a TV show, like a vintage Nickelodeon TV show cartoon. The number 18, this could also be 81. Either of those could be significant to you somehow. Hand in My Pocket by Alanis Morissette. That's a song. One hand in my pocket, the other one is flicking a cigarette. Okay, number four. So four could be the month of April. That could also be like four, four, four. Um, April is for Aries and Taurus energy. You could live on the fourth floor, the fourth apartment. You could live on fourth street or fourth avenue. Um, four people in your family, four children in your family, something like that. Mia Thermopolis. That's the main character from The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot. She was played by Anne Hathaway in The Princess Diaries movie. Anniversary, Tony, Tony, Tony. That's a song. So you could like that song or it could have just been your anniversary for something. Seth Rogen, or your anniversary I guess could be coming up. Seth Rogen is an actor. You might know him from like Superbad. A lot of other things, Pineapple Express. The Majesties by Tiffany Sow. So that is a book, and a large part of that book did take place in Indonesia. So Indonesia is definitely coming through. Rascal Flats, that's a country pop band. Katara from Avatar The Last Airbender. TV show. She's like the female lead in that TV show. Aaron Taylor Johnson. He's an actor. You might know him from like Bullet Train. Kick ass. Cheerleader by Omi. The Felix Jane radio edit. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. Randall Park. He is another actor. He played the dad on Fresh Off the Boat. He was also in Always Be My Maybe. And some other things. We Got Love by Tiana Taylor featuring Ms. Lauren Hill. That's a song. We Got Love, Love, Love. Legally Blonde, both a movie and a musical. I think there's also a book, um, but that stars Reese Witherspoon. Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy by Big and Rich. That is a song, a country song, country pop song, I guess you could say. Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging. So this is a book, but they did turn it into a movie. The movie was called Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging, and Aaron Taylor Johnson was actually in it. He played Robbie in that movie, who's like the main character's love interest. Um, so diaries could be interesting. Diaries could be... Um, significant somehow because both in the princess diaries which is where mia thermopolis is coming from and then also angus songs of full frontal snogging it's like teenage girls writing in their diaries or their journals so that could be significant somehow grand crew that is a tv show about a group of friends who hangs out at a wine bar in la famous last words Picture by Sheryl Crow and Kid Rock. So a lot of like country music is coming through right now. That's a pretty um, 
pretty popular duet that people like to do, like a karaoke. 12-12, so that could be the actual time 12-12. You might be seeing 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two around a lot. You could, it could be um, a significant date, December 12th. We also have the number 10 here. 10 would be October, that's Libra and Scorpio energy. So 10th Street, 10th Avenue, 10th Apartment, that kind of thing, 10 people in your family. Juicy by Doja Cat featuring Tyga. I'll keep it juicy, juicy. I eat that lunch. Sexy Villain by Remy Wolf. That's another song. Sexy Villain. Not the hero. I'm no West Coast Bob De Niro. Bad Batter Baddest by Cynthia Voigt. That is a young adult novel. I guess it's kind of like middle school novel, maybe. Piano. So maybe you like to play the piano. Maybe you're a piano player or something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe you recently saw a piano or saw somebody playing the piano live. There's also maybe like a bar called Pianos or something. Self-date. Could have taken yourself out on a date or you might be planning to. This incense that I have is like hissing over here. I don't know that I've ever heard it make that noise before. Anyway, Please Don't Leave Me by Pink. That is a song. <sighs> Angela Bassett, actress. You may know her from What's Love Got to Do With It. She played Tina Turner. You might also know her from American Horror Story. How Stella Got Her Groove Back. A lot of things. Ruffles, that could be the chips or the fabrics. Like you could be wearing like a shirt with ruffles on it or if you like to sew, you might be sewing some ruffles or something. Zach Brown Band, Colder Weather. That's a little bit more country music coming through. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Please Don't Leave Me by Pink is like wanting a lot of attention right now, which is funny because of the name. So yeah, something to do with that. Da -da 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 -da. Bojack Horseman, that is an animated TV show, adult animation. It's on Netflix. Will Arnett plays Bojack Horseman. It's about a... Um, a horse man who is a famous television star and he battles like depression and addiction and stuff like that. Na Na by Trey Songs. Da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. Heart of Dixie, and then it says RB up in the corner, which stands for Rachel Bilson. Heart of Dixie is a TV show about a New York City doctor who moves to Alabama to take over a family practice. Um, Rachel Bilson stars as that doctor. And then we've got International. So you could be planning an international trip. You might have parents from two different countries or something like that. You might have just gotten back from an international trip, anything like that. So yeah, these are our identifiers for pile two. I'm gonna go write these down in my tarot journal. If you are interested, I made a tarot journal for you guys. The link is down in the description box below. You can go check it out, get yourself one. It's really good for readings like this, or even if you just do your own readings at home. It's a great place to record your insights. But yeah, I'm gonna go write down all of this stuff in my tarot journal and I'll see you guys in just a second for the reading. What it do pile two, welcome, welcome to the reading. We're gonna get your cards out. We have the wild unknown tarot here. I did pre-pull some Oracle cards. We've got from the everyday Oracle and then we have also got from the what's the news Oracle. So we're going to use the Everyday Oracle first, then we'll get the tarot out, and then we'll go into what's the news. So yeah, let's see. How, what would a tarot reader tell them about you? That's what we want to know. This perspective can get a little bit confusing, so I'm going to do my best to keep it all straight. And everything that I'm reading from the cards is what the tarot reader would say about you to them. Okay, so I just want you to keep that in mind just in case I switch perspectives or anything. But we've got here, La Nemica. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's so crazy. I just feel like, especially the cards from this Everyday Oracle in the first pile, too, were like kind of like negative connotation cards. Um, this means the enemy. <laughs> the foe, the enemy. So apparently a tarot reader would tell this person that you are not their friend. That's what 
they would tell them. So I guess uh, you can feel free to stick around to see because the pot one did kind of start off slightly negatively and then like turned things around. Um, and you know, there was like a lot of love in, in pile one. Um, and I would say like even like no love lost in pile one. So if you want to stick around to see how this turns out, even if you feel like, well, I'm not their enemy, I'm not their foe, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If you want to um, stick around and see how this turns out, then things could turn around. So, okay, just wanted to say that anyway. Let's see, what would a tarot reader tell someone about pile two? And I'm sure that you have a specific person in mind. What would a tarot reader tell that person about pile two? All right, we've got... Move this over just a little bit. All right, um, temperance. So already things are calming down a little bit in the energy with temperance card here. The daughter of wands, that's the page of wands in reverse. This is the... Ten of Wands in reverse, which actually also came out in pile one, interestingly enough, in the reverse. And then we've got the Queen of Wands. So lots of Wands energy here. I promise you guys I shuffled this deck real good. Um, and then finally we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Alrighty then. Just make a little bit of espacio for these guys to all sit on the same row. All right, so yeah, what would a tarot reader tell them about you? Um, the first thing that I'm thinking of, especially with this particular card, is gossip or intentionally trying to hurt somebody. Um, you know, she does have this little knife in her hand here. Um, the numbers 12, 65, or 41 could be significant as well as the letter P. And you'll also notice that this person, she's wearing, a, or she's holding a mask. So this is definitely giving like fake, fake shit, fakeness. Um, so yeah, a tarot reader might tell them that you are a fake friend. Um, however, with the temperance card being here, Temperance can speak about patience. It can also speak about fate. And I'm getting that you you are an important person in this other person's life. And that you are maybe meant to help them somehow or lead them down a certain pathway somehow. So with the Daughter of Wands, this Ten of Wands and the Mother of Wands, it's like, I think that you're meant to help this person to become this Mother of Wands energy. And they're meant to become that from living in this reversed daughter of wands energy here, which is somebody who is having a hard time reconciling their inner child. Someone who is, and could have also even been unpopular as a child or as a young person. They may not have learned how to play well with other people um, and there could have been some sneakiness. And so I think the you being in this person's life, that could also partially describe you as well. Um, but you were there to help them to grow and to learn when to like kind of, I'm hearing like lay your armor down. I'm also hearing, um, just to take a load off and to plant some seeds that are going to help them to grow further later on in life. If you notice the difference between these two cards here, this Daughter of Wands and this Mother of Wands, both of them are represented by sneaks. There's one single branch, but on the Daughter of Wands branch, there are flowers on it. And then over here, there is no flowers, but also the Mother of Wands is protecting some eggs. She's got some eggs with her and I think a tarot reader would tell them that not only are you very protective of those people that you love, but also that you've kind of entered into your like take no shit kind of era. Um, and that even if things are not always the best between you two, that 
you are meant to help them to grow up and to also to maybe learn something from you. Maybe learn, a, a, I don't want to say a better way of being, but more, there is something that they need to learn how to be like you in some way. It's not like, you know, stealing your identity or anything like that, but you are meant to be an example for them in a lot of ways. And that's what a tarot reader would tell them about you. The idea of tiptoeing is coming through pretty strongly. And so that means to me secrecy. A tarot reader would tell them that you have some sort of secret or a need for secrecy, a need for privacy. There may not be an equal give and take here in this in this relationship. If it's a friendship, especially, but just in general, if it's a relationship, there may not be an equal give and take here, especially when it comes to money or finances or resources. And even in some cases, information as knowledge is power, you know, um, there may not be an equal give and take with, with between the two of you guys. It might be that one person knows more about the other than the other person. That's possible. There's a lot of fire energy in here. So Aries Leo Sagittarius is coming through too. Um, temperance, temperance is a Sagittarius card as well. Um, fire and water could be important here. So somebody could have fire signs. The other person could have water signs. That won't resonate for every person, but, um, or every pair of people. It's interesting to me thinking about this. I wanted to call it a heron. I don't know what kind of bird this is, but it's like crying into the fire and these tears are really, really standing out to me. And even the fire itself is shaped like one kind of large teardrop. And there is this very intense passion that could even be born from sadness between the two of you. Um, and I think that a tarot reader would tell them that you might be angry with this person. Um, and if you are angry with them, I don't see it being, you know, a full force anger of like, I'm coming to, you know, destroy you and your life, but more of like a building anger. This could be very deep seated anger. Um, and it might be even be a situation where they don't know that you're angry. The person you're asking about might not even know that you're angry at them. With Daughter of Wands here in the reverse especially, I feel that you maybe didn't learn how to manage your anger when you were young or how to manage your hurtful or painful or even just big emotions when you were young. Um, maybe also something to do with your passions or your creativity. You didn't get a chance to express yourself when you were young. And so it could be difficult for you to express yourself now as an adult. I'm actually thinking we did get um, Katara from Avatar the Last Airbender in our identifiers, but I'm not thinking about Katara. I'm thinking about May. If you guys are familiar with that show, May is one of the main characters. Well, I don't really see a main character. She kind of becomes a main character by the end. She is one of the fire princesses, best friends, and she ends up being Zuko's girlfriend. And one of the issues that they have together a lot is that May, she says at a certain point that like she got whatever, everything that she wanted as long as she, you know, didn't show too much emotion and always did what her parents said. And so she grew up to be not necessarily emotionally stunted, but like she just never, there was never any benefit to her saying how she really felt about things or anything like that. But she was like a very ferocious fighter, very ferocious warrior. She wasn't a bender, but she was able to, you know, get shit done. And I'm just kind of getting that same kind of thing where, like, Azula, who's the fire princess, Zuko's sister, never ever knew the depth of May's feelings for Zuko. And then also never expected that May would harbor any sort of resentment towards her. And I'm getting kind of the same thing here, that 
A tarot reader would tell this person that you might be harboring some sort of resentment towards this towards them that they don't know about and that is not very easy to see because you could be very good at you know kind of pushing that down or not letting it really come between you guys on the day to day but a tarot reader would definitely pick up on that energy and would um would would tell this person that you're asking about about it for sure these flowers are very interesting to me, especially, you know, on these two cards here. Um, both of them are in reverse. And so it's almost like this idea of things blooming, but not in a way that you would expect them to. So a Cho reader would tell them that things between the two of you guys might come to the surface, but just not in a way that they would expect it to come to the surface. And it could end up being unresolvable in some ways i am getting the ideas of like fantasy and imagination here somebody could be interested in taking the other one's place and a tarot reader might tell them that you're interested in taking their place and that you could be planting seeds to do so i'm also getting that your generosity comes at a price um tit for tat is what i'm hearing that this person may expect to experience some sort of generosity on from you on your behalf, but that you would expect something in return from them. And, you know, there is some snake energy here, of course, with Nimika as well. Um, and that's, you know, snakes are not all poisonous for sure. Some of them are very friendly. Some of them even make great pets, but at the end of the day, they are cold blooded. And, you know, they don't have a lot of feelings or warmth, inherent warmth. And so the Six of Pentacles here in reverse typically is about generosity and, you know, giving somebody maybe even credit where credit is due or helping people who are maybe less fortunate than you. Um, but with it being here in reverse, it is about give and take and also like giving something with an expectation of something in return. So I think that a tarot reader would tell them that you expect something in return for your friendship or your kindness or even I also just heard maybe like getting a lick back getting back at them for something um this ten of wands here in reverse it's about being dropped some of you guys this could be um a friend who dropped you or who maybe has plans to drop you at some point or is even just considering dropping you at some point um, but also just like the way that these wands are arranged normally in other versions of the tarot especially Rider weight based, based versions of the tarot you would see them being kind of like stacked really neatly and in this one it's like they're a mess it's like 10 sticks you know on the forest floor very difficult to see through sometimes they say this is like you can't see the forest for the trees and um if that's the case, it's like there could have been something that happened between the two of you guys that makes it very difficult to see beyond that. And I am definitely getting that anger coming through right now. And even if you guys maybe did have a really nice friendship at one point or something like that or a really nice relationship at one point, there could just be something that this person that you can't see past. And this person would hear that from a tarot reader. There's something that you cannot see past in this situation. All right, let's go ahead and get these what's the news oracles here. We've got, it's your power they want. I'm going to keep that in reverse. And I did say something about somebody trying to take your place. We've got obsessed third party interference. That thing with like May, Zuko, and Azula from Avatar is like really coming through right now because there was one point in the show where Azula really, really, really wanted Zuko to die. <laughs> and May came in and interfered with it. And she got in a ton of trouble with Azula for doing that, but she interfered and, um, eventually she does kind of, I mean, it's implied, it's not like canon that May and Zuko like get married or anything, but Zuko does become the Fire Lord. And if he and May did get married, she would be like the new 
princess or the new queen of the Fire Nation, right? So it is kind of like taking Azula's place, even without necessarily intending to or meaning to. An attempt to get him. Mm. There could be something to do, it does say third party interference, so there could be something to do with a, um, like a third person. In the example that I just gave, the third person was, so it was these two girls who were friends and then one of the girls had a brother, right? That the other friend like fell in love with, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be that like, it's somebody's boyfriend or something like that. It could be somebody's family member who is the him or the, other, the third party that we're talking about. Through it all with you. Yeah, I did say that you guys can have like a, a very long time or deep friendship. You guys might have known each other since childhood, especially with this daughter of wands here. But I do just kind of feel like, and you guys could have even grown up together in a lot of ways, especially with the daughter of wands going through to the mother of wands here. It's like a maturity. It's it's maturing. And I said that you guys were fated to, to meet each other as well. Um, but there's just some sort of really deep anger here. And you guys might have gone through so many things together, but there's just some sort of deep anger here. And it says, undying love, my pain, my love, my sorrow, here in the reverse. So yeah, again, that idea of the pain and the, and the sorrow being kind of stronger than the love that you two shared for each other. Um, that is what a tarot reader would tell this person about you, is that there's some sort of pain that is deeper and more volatile and also more motivating than the love that is shared between the two of you. And it's just like this unending stream of tears is going into this fire, but it's fueling the fire. It could, I guess, eventually put the fire out at one point, but um, it, it just feels hurt. It feels hurt, it feels hurtful. And a tarot reader would tell them that this person does have plans, this person meaning you, a tarot reader would tell them that you have plans to like get your lick back or whatever, however that may be, however that may happen. Um, and it could be through an attempt with a third party person here, especially. All right, I feel like something else from the tarot wants to come out here. What would a tarot reader tell them about you? Mother of Cups. Mm, interesting. So yeah, with the Mother of Cups here, that of course is like very motherly energy. It is like literal mother of children kind of energy. Um, that could be something to do with your mom, their mom. One of you guys could be a parent. One of the two of you guys who's in this connection that you're asking about could be a parent. Um, the mother of cups is also really all about creativity and self care and knowing how to handle situation delicately. Okay. Um, so I feel like a tarot reader would tell them that you're handling the situation very delicately. And even as I said before, it's not like you're going to come out, <laughs> even when I'm talking about like getting your lick back or whatever, it's not like you're going to come out just like guns blazing. I feel like it's like a tit for tat, taking your time, planting seeds, waiting for those seeds to harvest kind of thing. There's even, I think, a protective element here, which I think I said before when I was talking about these two, the daughter of wands and the mother of wands, there's a protective element here. Um, between the two of you. Um, I think that a tarot reader would tell this person to watch their drinks around you. I hope that you're not, you know, planning on hurting anybody through anything that they eat or drink or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, a tarot reader would probably tell them to watch their drinks around you. And I think a tarot reader would also tell them to pay attention to themselves, to look out for themselves. What I find really interesting is that both of these birds in the Mother of Cups and the Temperance card, they both have a like a wing out. You see that? They both have like a wing, just like out. Um, and that one makes me think about like taking somebody under your wing or under their wing or whatever, which that could apply to the relationship here for sure. But it also makes me just think of coverage, you know, being covered. And when I say being covered, that made me think of like maybe somebody like covering your shifts at work 
Um, it also makes me think about just like feeling covered and feeling protected. Somebody giving maybe like their coat or giving the shirt off their back or something like that. And I do think that you guys had like a really, really deep love or friendship or whatever this is. It does feel friendshipy to me, but it also, I can see where this would be a romantic situation. Um, and covering each other's backs, having each other's backs, you know, but at the end of the day, I just kind of think that there are things that happened between the two of you that maybe you can't take back at a certain point, you know? Um, and so there is some fear here. And I think that the tarot reader would tell this person that you're asking about to watch out for you, not necessarily to fear you, but to watch out for you. And that, um, you know, they should just always, instead of covering you or covering your back or whatever in the future, they should cover their own back. So instead of maybe putting you first, they should put themselves first in the future because that's what you're doing. For some of you guys, I'm getting a message that there could be like a, um, especially with this third party, you know, third party interference, obsessed and attempt to get him. Somebody might be plotting on the other one's man. Okay. If you're plotting on somebody's partner, it doesn't have to be a man. I just said that in, cause it said an attempt to get him. The tarot reader might tell this person that you are interested in not only taking their place, but like literally taking their place, like in their family. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like maybe wanting to be with their partner or to, you know, get them pushed out of their life and you take their place in their life or something like that. Like be the new stepmom or be the new stepdad to their kids or something like that. All right, pal two, I'm going to go ahead and leave your reading here. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please. I'm always so curious to hear about the, you know, the relationships in these readings. So if you would like to share with me, leave a comment. I would love to read it. I would love to interact with you in the comments. Don't forget to like this video. Give this video a thumbs up. It does help it to spread a little farther so other people who may need to hear the message can read it or can <laughs> other people who may need to hear the message can watch it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that we can be more connected. And you guys won't miss any of my upcoming videos. I will see you all in the next one. Love you. Bye. Hey there, pile three. We're going to get into your identifiers. If you would like to skip over this part of the reading, you're more than welcome to. There's another timestamp down below and it will say pile three reading if you want to skip this part and get to the part straight with the cards. But for now, let's do a little energy check in, make sure that this is actually the reading for you. I know you're supposed to choose the piles intuitively. This will just help you to make sure that you got the right reading. Um, so the way that these identifiers work is that at least one of the things that comes out on one of these slips in my lip bowl should be significant to you somehow or could have been shown, could be showing up in your life, especially over the last few days. So for example, if there is an actor in here that comes out, maybe that could be like your favorite actor, which would be the significance part. Or you might have just seen like a movie or an ad or something with them in it really recently okay so let's see spirit who's in pile three for this reading the reading is what would a tarot reader tell them about you so you're thinking of you know a specific person you want to know what a tarot reader would say about you to them so who's in pile three the people who chose the tarot of the spirit who are my pile three people while i'm doing this make sure you hit that thumbs up button like this video to help it spread a little farther and help people who may need to see it to find it and make sure you subscribe to my channel as well so that you and I can be more connected and then my readings will be a little bit more tailored to your energy. All right, who else is in Pal 3, Spirit? Anybody else in Pal 3? All right, let's do this.
We've got Portion for Foxes by Rilo Kylie. That's a song. Familiar. So that does make me think about like a witch's familiar, but also um, like family and maybe somebody said something about something being familiar to you. I don't know. Suitcase. Could be packing for a trip. Maybe you just bought a new suitcase, something like that. Sinna from the Hunger Games. He was Katniss's stylist in the movie played by Lenny Kravitz. Dupe. So that could be makeup or trickster, but dupe is supposed to be like a cheaper version of something with like either a very similar or kind of the same formula. The Climb by Miley Cyrus. That's a song. That song is from the Hannah Montana movie. Boys in the Hood. That's a movie. It's the climb. This is the number nine. So that would be the month of September. You could be seeing 999. Um, that would be Virgo and Libra energy. You could live on the ninth floor, the ninth apartment, ninth street, ninth avenue. There could be nine people in your family, stuff like that. Stuffed grape leaves. It's a food. Some kind. Sometimes they're called dolmas. Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison is a song. Return of the Mac edibles. Once again. Sesame chicken. Evermore by Taylor Swift featuring Bonnie Bear. ATVs. Those are like those four wheelers that people will ride around, like the beach, the jungle, the country, whatever. Teach for America. That's a teaching program for college graduates. Burn by Usher. Lobster. Got a white boy on my Rasta. Keep feeding me pasta and lobster. Um, I'm also thinking about like lobsters like from Maine and stuff like that. All black everything. Los Angeles. Airbnb. Some of you guys might have like booked an Airbnb in Los Angeles recently. We've got the number eight here. So all the same things as nine, but you could be seeing 888. That is Leo and Virgo energy. Also maybe 89 or 98. Those two numbers together. Lemonade by Gucci Mane. That's a song. I got Lemonade Unlimited. Endings, Beginnings, Movie. Um, that's a movie starring Shailene Woodley. The number two. Okay, so two would be like February. You could be seeing 222. Um, that is Aquarius and Pisces energy there as well. So 289, 892, 298 any combination of those numbers 928 bimbo let's see what is this one misfits i was as i was opening up i thought i was going to say mississippi but it did not it says misfits that's a tv show it's like a british tv show uninvited by mall rat I think Misfits is also the name of a band. I'm really not sure, um, but maybe a band as well. Doug, the TV show. That was a TV show on Nickelodeon. It was a cartoon. That was the one that had the theme song. That was like, do, 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 do. Addis Ababa, capital of Ethiopia. The number six, so that is June 
that's Gemini and Cancer energy there. So all the same things I said before. Um, and any combination of these numbers, eight, nine, two, and six could be important to you. Nick Miller from New Girl, played by Jake Johnson. Mr. Fish Odor, he is the landlord in Bob's Burgers. That TV show, Bob's Burgers. He's the guy who like always wears the all white suit. What is this? Outstanding by the Gap Band. That's a song. Outstanding. Jessica Alba, Fantastic Four. Also maybe just somebody named Jessica. So Nick and Jess, they were like the main couple on New Girl, the main characters. So that energy is coming through pretty strongly as well. I knew it. What did I say? Mississippi. I knew it was going to come out. It's right there. I knew it. <laughs> when I picked up Misfits, I had a feeling... I thought it said Mississippi, and it did not. And then Mississippi comes out. I love when that happens. Nicki Minaj, Marilyn Monroe. So she has a song. She, meaning Nicki, has a song called Marilyn Monroe. But, like, literally you, anything to do with either of them could also be a um, identifier for you. Lisbon, Portugal. Houston, Texas. New Orleans. We got lots of locations all of a sudden. That's very interesting. So some of you guys may, might be traveling, especially since we got Airbnb. We also did get Los Angeles over here as well, too. And we got suitcase. So definitely some people might be traveling. And last but not least, Bob Marley. Okay. Um, speaking of traveling, some of you guys might be like climbing somewhere. You guys might be like rock climbers or forest people, like hikers or whatever. Um, yeah okay interesting so yeah i'm gonna go ahead oh some of you guys might be into like archery especially since we did get the hunger games coming out here as well too but yeah um when endings beginnings came out and i said it was a shailene woodley movie i was like about to say oh shailene woodley but i don't have like the um what is that movie series called divergent i don't have that in here but i did think about it and in that movie she was one of like the dauntless people or whatever um it was a book series too so just thinking about that so yeah like you could be a little bit like rough around the edges or you might really like like physical stuff like climbing hiking that kind of thing anyway yeah i'm gonna go write these down in my tarot journal you guys if you want your own tarot journal i did make one for you guys the link is down below in the bio. It really is really great resource. It's a great resource, especially if you like to watch a lot of videos or do your own tarot readings. It's a great place to write down your insights and things like that. So yeah, go check that out if you feel so called. But I'm going to go write these down in my tarot journal and I will see you guys in just a second for the actual reading. What's up, pile three? If you chose the Tarot of the Spirit, then this is going to be your reading. We're talking today about what would a tarot reader tell them about you? So yeah, the perspective on this is like a little bit hard to articulate sometimes. So forgive me if I get a little tongue tied, but yeah, anything that I'm saying is about how the tarot reader sees you. Okay. And what they would say to the, the person that you're asking about the person who's on your mind. So we're going to get started with some pre-pulled cards. I used the Everyday Oracle, and then we have the What's the News Oracle. That's actually going to come later. So we're going to do this, then we're going to do the tarot, and then we're going to do What's the News. Let's get into it. So what would a tarot reader tell them about you? We got here Amalato. Mm. This makes me think of somebody being sick or just sleepy or maybe just lazy. I'm going to look in the actual book. It did come out kind of upside down. I don't know if I'm going to take it that way not yet or not. I have to think about that, but we'll see. I don't speak Italian, so I can't say exactly what that word is, but we'll find out. 
Yeah, this is about sick person, health problems of uncertain seriousness. Okay, so yeah, we are going to take this in the reverse. Um, with this being sick, and in the book it says, like, uncertain seriousness, that makes me think that it's, like, not maybe not a sickness of the body, but maybe a sickness of the mind. That is one of the first thing that comes to me. And also maybe you could be getting over a sickness of some kind. You could be taking medication for something. Um... The numbers 4, 90, or 26 could be significant to you somehow. All right, I'm going to leave it upright for now. And let's go ahead and get the tarot out. Spirit. What would a tarot reader tell the person... So pile three, they're asking, they have a certain person in mind. What would a tarot reader tell that person about pile three? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we got the two of fire here, two of wands in reverse convergence. So to me, this means that the two of you guys are not on the same path. You guys don't have the same passions. Um, maybe you don't have the same interests. We have the magician in reverse as well. And we got the seven of water, which is the seven of cups. And we got the fool. All right. So I think a tarot reader would tell this person, my first thought is like to give up and to move on. <laughs> to give up and to move on, especially if this is um, maybe somebody who like has a crush on you or something like that. Um, I think what the tarot reader would tell them is that this i'm getting the idea like this is like a pipe dream and that could be for a lot of different reasons this could be because of um i almost wanted to say like lack of like mental faculties and that does not i'm not saying that to be like mean or anything i think it's more like you might not have the time or just the brain space to be able to consider this person or to think about this person in the way that they want you to okay and also the magician in reverse can be quite manipulative. Um, yeah. Some of you guys may be having some challenges when it comes to things like depression or maybe like borderline personality disorder or some something like that. That is not going to resonate for everybody, obviously, but I did feel the need to call it out for some person. And with the fool being here, I think that a tarot reader would tell the person on your mind to move forward, to let it go and move on. We got the nine of wind here, which is the nine of swords. And we also got the five of water, which is the five of cups in reverse. When I was saying that you might not have the mental faculties to, um, deal with this person in the way that they want you to you could also be getting over some sort of disappointment in love or getting over some sort of insecurity or something that's like been keeping you up all night some of you guys might literally have insomnia um and if that's the case it's like you are trying to figure out like how do i even take care of myself how do i get myself to sleep like i don't have time to think about this other person i'm literally just trying to do my best for myself right and yeah, with this one being about like somebody who might be sick, this could literally also be like sleep problems. So some of you guys might have like sleep apnea or something like that. Um, there's all different types of things that could be taking up space in your brain or causing potential health issues that are just like not allowing you to give this person the consideration that they would want from you. And the tarot reader would tell them that for sure. All right, let's get let's keep it going. This is like a short, quick, fast one in a hurry. <laughs> All right, shots fired straight to the heart. That makes me think of that song from Bon Jovi. Shot through the heart, you're to blame, darling. You give love a bad name. Played your part and you played your game. You give love. A bad name. I actually don't know if that's all the right words, <laughs> but whatever. That's what came through. Threatens you never to leave. Mm, okay, interesting. And then we got career worries. Mm, yeah. 
yeah again a two person would say this person has too much on their mind to be thinking about you they might be concerned about their career about their finances they might be concerned about like a presentation that they have that they've been up all night for and they like literally just cannot think about you um threatens you never to leave this is giving that manipulative energy that I was talking about with the magician here in the reverse as well, too. Um, perhaps, like, if you were to be involved with this person, like, let's say that you did have the time to be involved with this person, then even then the tarot reader would warn them against it because there is a manipulative energy here. Um, I'm hoping that none of you guys are, like, actively violent but shots fired and threatens you does make me concerned about that. Um, it's so funny because in one of my past readings, I don't remember which one it was, but in one of them, I was getting like hitman energy. I was like, is somebody here a hitman? <laughs> I was like, I'm getting that like hitman for the mob. <laughs> and it's just so funny because it's like, that's literally such a specific energy. It's like, who even is that? I don't know. But I'm kind of like, it, this makes me think about that again, too. Like, career worries, shots fired, threatens you. <laughs> um, a tarot reader might tell this person that it could be dangerous for them to be with you. You know? Um, yeah. Dangerous for them, whether that is, like, danger caused by you or danger caused by just like being with you because you know how sometimes it's like somebody oh there's my dog you guys can you see him oh he's smiling he looks so happy he just looks excited to be part of the video i guess i don't know <laughs> something that i'm also seeing is that if this person were to kind of find out about the fact that you guys are like kind of moving in two different directions or the manipulativeness or the um, lack of mental capacity to deal with with them. That insight, I think, would be enough to get that person to kind of move forward away from you, like to move on and just go find somebody else and go do something else. This person definitely seems like they don't want any trouble. <laughs> they don't want to be bothered with any negativity. And if they feel like negativity is coming, they could be actually pretty easily swayed away from being in a connection with you. Um, you yourself might be getting over some sort of indecision or mental insecurities or just like feelings of being mentally trapped. And... That could be mentally trapped by a situation that is something to do with work or something to do with an ex. And I think that this person that you're asking about, if they were to hear this from a tarot reader, they would literally be like, I do not have time or even desire <laughs> to be involved in a situation like that because it just sounds messy. It seems messy. Um, so yeah, basically a tarot reader would tell this person that your life is kind of a mess right now and that they would be better off without you and I know that that sucks to hear and I'm sorry I don't mean to like deliver it in a weird or rude way but like that's just what the cards are saying I'll just say this one piece of advice it's like when somebody tells you who they are you should believe them the first time and I think that this person maybe didn't want to hear or didn't want to believe what they saw or heard from you about your situation about who you are and where you are in your life and so if they were to hear this from a tarot reader, they would take it to heart that time around and they would be able to move on. You guys might enjoy like watching movies together, or maybe like going bowling together or something. Um, and these like two little rows of circles in this card that are kind of like leading in like this way and this way, um, they are reminding me a little bit of like unicorn horns. And I think that this person sees you as a really special person and they see you as special in a good way, but they didn't want to see or hear the reality of kind of like what your situation was, where you are emotionally. And so that's why they um, 
weren't able to let it go or haven't been able thus far to let it go. But I think if they heard this, if they were, or even if they just tuned into their own intuition or if, even if they just like listened to what you said, they would um, realize that I just heard Better Off Alone <laughs> by Alice DJ, that they would be better off just, you know, letting you guys go your, go your separate ways, go in your different directions and move on and that there are other options out there that are probably better for them. I heard other fish in the sea. So yeah. Some of you guys might be getting over some career issues where maybe you were potentially out of work for a little while. Um, or you might have just been having troubles at work and you might be finally getting over that. The screen also does make me think of like interviews. So some of you guys might have had some either unfruitful or negative interviews or just like uneventful interviews. You could be feeling kind of self-conscious about where you are in your career. And if that's the case, you might be like, well, I don't really have time to date because I have to focus on my career. Some of you guys might be having, uh, might have like a stable career, but it's a career that kind of keeps you away from your love life. It's a career that you must put first and there's literally like no, there's no other option other than to put the career first. Um, like you're never going to change your schedule around in order to have a date with somebody, you know, um, or you might work late a lot or you could be even a person who is somehow like affiliated with maybe like the military or public service or something in some way and it makes it very difficult for you to change things around about how you would or could date because your career is very demanding for some of you guys especially with the sick being here you might be having like actual heart issues um or diabetes or something like that you might have to take shots for something um but yeah, some of you guys could be having heart issues. Some of you guys might have like had actual like um, cardiac events, you know, like not like heart attacks, but something that could be related to your heart that's kind of scary. And a tarot reader would tell them that about you. Some of you guys might have gone in for like a health screening or something like that lately. And a tarot reader would definitely tell them about that. Um, and it's, if you did go in for a health screening lately, you might have found that there is something maybe that isn't working properly. Maybe um, a leak, something leaky. I just heard like leaky gut, maybe uh, like a leaky valve or something like that. I don't know, but um, yeah, there could also be a blockage of some kind with convergence here in the reverse. So yeah, there's also some like X imagery coming through here. Like both of these have this X here on the table with the swords and then this one has it here as well too. And then even this kind of has it like this. So this could be your X that you're asking about. Oh, even on here too, on this bear's face, there's like a little X on his eye. So yeah. Um, this could be an ex that you're asking about, or you guys could be exes or something like that. For some of you guys, you guys might have been in like a kind of violent relationship in the past. It doesn't have to have been with the person that you're asking about. It could have been with somebody else. Um, and the tarot reader would definitely tell them about that too. There could have been some sort of like abuse, physical abuse, or even mental abuse, verbal abuse in the past that you went through or even perpetrated onto somebody. Um, definitely seeing stuff like hospital stays I'm seeing threats I'm seeing <laughs> you guys I'm seeing some crazy stuff in here I'm seeing kidnapping um, pew pew machines you know what I'm talking about um, cliffs I mean yeah I'm seeing all kinds of things so honestly like I said before I think that I'm also seeing like 
safes, lock boxes, things like that for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's like I said before, I think that a tarot reader would probably tell this person to stay away from you. <laughs> if you guys could see the face that I'm making right now. Um, the day, yeah, they would probably tell this person to stay away from you, honestly. And I think that they would listen. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what's going on. I would love to think that you've, you know, graduated from this behavior that, or, you know, um, that this is not something that you would do and that you wouldn't hurt anybody. We can only hope, I guess. Um, this dog here looks like a husky to me. I don't know why, but it kind of does. So huskies could be relevant in some way, shape or form. Husky, as soon as I said it, I also started thinking about like fat. Cause you know, sometimes that's what they call people when they're trying to say that they're like bigger. Um, so yeah, that could be some sort of verbal abuse, especially when it comes to somebody's weight or um, even now I'm thinking about like Munchausen's by proxy and stuff where it's like putting stuff in somebody's food to make them sick or poisoning. I don't know. I mean, yeah, all kinds of crazy things. So, ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing thinking about poisoning. I'm just like, wow. You know, there's all kinds of people out there. It's a little weird and a little scary that somebody would say this about you, pile three. Um, I hope it's not true, but you know, tarot rarely, <laughs> rarely does the tarot lie. So anyway. This is probably a very specific pile for very specific people. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this reading here. Make sure you like this video. It really does help it to spread around so that other people who may need to find it can see it. Don't forget to give it the thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey there, pile four. Welcome, welcome, welcome in. We're gonna get into our identifiers first. If you'd like to skip over this part and go straight to the part with the cards, there is another timestamp down below labeled pile four reading. You can go ahead and use that to just skip over this part if you don't wanna watch it. But if you chose the Murder of Crows tarot and you want to watch the identifiers, then by all means, stick with me. Let's get our handy dandy lip bowl out. So the way that these work is that at least one thing on these slips should be significant to you somehow, or it could have just been showing up in your life in the last few days. So yeah, so let's say that like lemongrass comes out or whatever, and you've either, that could be like your favorite flavor, or it could be like your favorite scent of incense, or it could be like the name of your favorite Thai restaurant. Or maybe you've just like heard a lot of people talking about lemongrass over the last couple weeks or last couple of days or whatever, then that would be a sign that this is in fact your pile. So we just use these for confirmation. If you already feel very confident with your pile choice, if you already feel really attached or really drawn to the Murder of Crows Tarot, you do not have to, you know, use these by any means to help you confirm. Some people just like them, so yeah, let's see. Spirit, who are my pile four people who chose the Murder of Crows tarot for this reading? Who are my pile four people? Pile four. Who's in pile four? Anybody else in pile four? All right, let's do this little tiny pile we've got earrings so you could own a lot of earrings maybe you just bought some earrings or you're gifting somebody some earrings or somebody gifted you some you might have a lot of ear piercings or something like that wake up in the sky by gucci mane bruno mars and kodak black that's a song Ying Yang Twins. They are a hip hop duo from Atlanta. Road trip. So maybe you like road trips. You might prefer driving in a car to air travel. You might be going on a road trip soon. Maybe you just got back from one. 
something like that. Or you might have just like watched a movie that was about a road trip or had the words road trip in the name or something like that. I'm thinking right now about like Johnson Family Vacation, which I believe was that Raven Simone and Eddie Murphy? I don't really know. I'm not sure that I could be wrong about that. Brushing teeth. Maybe you just brushed your teeth. <laughs> Maybe you're about to brush your teeth. Maybe you've been having trouble brushing your teeth. I know a lot that happens to a lot of people who are like depressed. Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. He is the last airbender. 10 Things I Hate About You. That's a movie starring Julia Stiles and Heath Ledger. R.I.P. DJ Tambi, Ink Master. So DJ Tambi is... And a D blah, blah, blah. <laughs> DJ Tambi is a tattoo artist. He also has won Ink Master three times, but he also became a judge on like the latest season. As of filming, latest season is like season 14 or 15 of Ink Master. So the show Ink Master in general could just be important to you or could have come up recently. Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. That's a song. So maybe you heard that recently. Maybe it's one of your favorites. We Used to Be Friends by the Dandy Warhols. That is the theme song to Veronica Mars. A long time ago, we used to be friends, but I haven't thought of you lately at all. Half and Half, that's a TV show starring Rachel True and Essence Adkins, I think is her name. It's about two half-sisters who live in the same apartment building in San Francisco. Lose My Breath by Destiny's Child. Can you keep up, baby boy, let me lose my breath. Oh, I thought I got rid of this one, but I guess I didn't. It was supposed to say new blood. Now it just says blood. <laughs> and then it says Dexter. <laughs> so Dexter is a TV show. I want to say it's on like Showtime or something like that. Um, and they had a sequel to it called New Blood, but then it got like ripped and I was going to I thought that I tossed it out of the bowl, but I guess it somehow got back in there. Anyway, Counting Crows. That's a band. Can you keep up, baby boy? Make me lose my breath. And you know what's funny is like when I first started doing this reading, I really felt like I was out of breath for no reason. <laughs> but I didn't feel like saying it because I was like, I'm just going to cut that part out. But no, I am out of breath a little bit. Honey Dijon, that could be a mustard. There's also a DJ who goes by Honey Dijon. Big Ridge Town by 50 Cent featuring Joe. That's the theme song for Power. So we got two theme songs here. We used to be friends and Big Ridge Town. Said this is a Big Ridge Town. I just come from the poet's part. Atlanta is also coming through for me too right now. Ballet Slippers, O-P-I. So ballet slippers could be actual ballet slippers like that people wear to use when they dance ballet, but O-P-I has a very pale pink nail polish shade called ballet slippers as well. Teddy Pendergrass, musician. Soul music of the 70s. Death Cab for Cutie, that's a band. Alt-rock of the early 2000s to now. Good by Better Than Ezra, more alt rock. They're from like Baton Rouge. Courtney B. Vance, he's an actor. So this is a big rich town. I just come from the bowlest part. Love, Simon. You guys, I told you Atlanta energy was coming through. This movie is set in Atlanta. What does this one say? Costa Rica. Taste by Tyga featuring Offset. And then last but not least, gospel music. All right, so if any of these things are resonant with you, then that can confirm that this is your reading. I'm gonna go ahead and write these down 
I hope that you found something significant. And if not, this could still be a reading. Again, I said if you're feeling like very attached to this um, Murder of Crows tarot, then that could be all the confirmation that you need. But I'm going to go ahead and write all of these down in my tarot journal. I did make a tarot journal for you guys. The link is down in the description box below if you're interested. If you like to watch readings or do your own readings, it could be a really good resource for you to record all of your findings and any insights that you may get. But yeah, I'm going to go write these down in my tarot journal. And I'll see you guys in a second where we'll get into the cards. All right, pile four, if you chose the Murder of Crows tarot, this is your reading. Let's get into it. Um, we're going to actually use some pre-pulled oracle cards first. So let's grab those. You guys got a lot of them, especially from the Everyday Oracle. There were a lot of these. And when we have the What's the News Oracle, we'll get to that towards the end. So we're going to go with this first, then this, then What's the News. So yeah, what would a tarot reader tell them about you? So you probably have a person on your mind. We want to know what a tarot reader would say about you to them. So we've got La Costanza. I feel that's like Constance consistency okay speranza that one's like hope mm, okay both of these are wearing like some sort of red veil on them interestingly enough we've got grand signore and yet another red veil another red cloak interesting La Legreza. I don't remember what that means. I'm going to have to look that up. So that's lightness. Then we've got La Fidelta. That's faith and fidelity. And last but not least, Suspiri. All right, so Suspiri is about longing, wanting something, waiting for it. This person, you might be waiting for like a message from them. This is also about memories, nostalgia, and regrets as well. Um, a tarot reader would tell this person that you are very loyal to them, that you spend a lot of time thinking about them. A tarot reader would say that you still have hope for this connection and that this connection makes your heart feel full and it makes you feel like you can transform or that you could do anything, which is quite beautiful. A tarot reader might also tell them that you are hoping to hear from them soon. Also, maybe that you're interested in doing a little bit of dirty, nasty, you know, a little bit of some sexy time. I didn't notice until just now that one of these, this lady had a, a boobie popping out. So they might want to, you know, you might want to uh, get naked with them. And especially with all of this, like red, these red cloaks, that's a lot of passion. There's a lot of passion in this connection. Um, definitely getting the sense of taking clothes off. I just heard that song. We don't have to take our clothes off. What song is Clothes Off by who? Um, I want to say that's Gym Class Heroes. <laughs> Fun. Okay, interesting. Um, so some numbers that could be important here, we've got 10, 52, 6, 8, 77, 8 again, 13, 55, 24, 10 again, 50, 15, 9, 88, 37, 6, 63, 38. Um, and we've got a lot of C's here. We also have F and P, but we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 C's. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody. But yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. What would a tarot reader tell this person? What would a tarot... Okay, so the person watching this video who picked Pile 4, we're going to call them Pile 4, they're thinking of specific... Of, what would a tarot reader tell Pile 4's person about Pile 4? Okay, we got the six of... Oh, this is the nine. Yeah, nine of pentacles in reverse. So there's like either a lack of independence or not wanting to be independent. Definitely, I just got a thought. I wouldn't say a feeling, but a thought of that song, Tired of Being Alone by Al Green. I'm so tired of being alone. I'm so tired of on my own. Won't you help me, girl, as soon as you can? Okay. We've also got here King of Swords in reverse. The Magician. We've got Death. We've got Judgment. And we have the Nine of Swords. Interesting. So there's a lot of major arcana here. This person would find out from a tarot reader that they have a major influence in your life or that you're going through some major life changes right now. Either of those things could be true. Um, they would find out that there's definitely like a major death and rebirth cycle going on for you in your life. And there's also some insecurities that you're facing too. It could be specifically when it comes to this connection, you have some insecurities. This could also be bringing up old shit from the past that is making you feel insecure, okay? Um, they would also find out that you are a very powerful person. You've got a lot of tools at your disposal. And that could be personally powerful. Like, you just have a lot of... I just heard the word gravitas. Um... Or it could also be socially powerful as well, I guess. Um, with this King of Swords in reverse, that reinforces the whole tired of being alone concept as well, but it also could be a little cold, calculated. I'm not getting manipulative though, because if that were the case, we would have the Magician in reverse and we don't. Um, I think that you do have good intentions and that's what the tarot reader would tell them but you could be kind of quick to cut people off and that might be why you're alone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I just like laugh sometimes at the situation as it comes up. Um, you could be kind of quick to cut people off and the tarot reader might tell them that about you. Especially with this death card here. It's like, you know, you can see that this like bull is like stomping on people. There's people down here at the bottom of this card here and here. Um, so not afraid of being alone, but tired of being alone. And I think that you could be haunted by some things from your past that kind of keep you up at night. I think it's interesting that we start off with the nine of pentacles in reverse, and then we end with the nine of swords. Those are the only two truly like minor arcana cards that are here. The king of swords is a court card, so it is minor arcana, but I don't really count it like that. Um... Because nine is supposed to be a number of security. It's supposed to be a number of stability. And while you may be materially secure or working to become materially secure, there is still some, some sort of mental challenge that's going on here where it's like you've convinced yourself that something is true, whether or not it is true or not. Okay. And it could be with relation to this relationship. It could be like you've convinced yourself something is true about this relationship, but that is that you guys are meant to be together, that you guys are not meant to be together, whatever. Um, you're pretty staunch in how you feel about that. And I think that the tarot reader would definitely pick up on that. If they were to tell your person something about you, they would pick up on it, that you have a pretty set mindset when it comes to whatever's happening here, or even just how you treat other people. All right, let's get these what's the news cards here. So we've got 
attraction try something new Ooh. so for some of you guys this could be a same-sex relationship that is not going to resonate with everybody but it could be there might be a lot of like I just wanted to say lesbian longing <laughs> obviously not every person watching this is going to be a lesbian but there could be some longing for somebody who either is the same sex as you or is somebody who maybe um you're like afraid to want for some reason all right and then we got hot drama hold up this shit is good <laughs> So yeah, um, the way that you feel about this person that you're asking about is definitely like very dramatic and I think it could cause a lot of drama in your lives. And this is making me think about skeletons in the closet. There's like a skeleton behind her in the movie theater. It's making me think about skeletons in the closet. So there could be some things that happened in your past, like I said, that are kind of keeping you in a certain mindset or keeping you awake at night. Um, but yeah, the boobs are real. The boobs are like boobing, okay? Because she had one popping out right over here. And then Elvira, you know, she got, she those things are sitting. Them things is thinging, okay? Um, so you might be really attracted to this person's chest. They could be really attracted to your chest, but you could be really attracted to their chest. And if that's the case, the tarot reader would tell them about that too. <laughs> okay <laughs> yes um shoulders as well i'm seeing too for sure we got shoulders here we got them here so yeah and here too um i think that the tarot reader would have a lot to say about you it would be like a very juicy reading because there is like some you know sexy elements to it there's also like i said those mindset elements to it Grand Signore makes me feel like Mr. Big or like husband energy or I won't even say that. I don't, that's like, I feel it, but it's not like strong. Um, I'm just going to say like a really big crush. Okay. Um, and this is like challenging as well too. And I think that this person would feel lucky if they had a chance to be with you or to be near you. And they also recognize that it would take a lot of work to do that. Um, Basing that off of these numbers here, we got 55. Five is the number of challenges and conflicts. 77 makes me think of, you know, luck, 777 seven, seven as well. Sevens are also a number about things being spoiled. Um, maybe taking something a little too far. Maybe having a mindset that is not um, helpful to a situation. And then eight, eight. Eight is about, you know, work. It can be about luck, but it's also about work. And it's about a test as well, too. So, um, yeah, I think this person feels like if they did have a chance with you, they'd be super lucky and they're afraid that they would mess it up. But whatever the um, see, I told you guys at the beginning that sometimes the perspective on these is like hard to say accurately. If you had a chance with this person, you would feel very lucky and you would be afraid that you would mess it up. And the chair reader would pick up on that and they would say that to them about you okay but yes this definitely feels like hot goss hot drama right um love simon came out in the identifiers and for those of you who don't know it is a movie it's about this like high school senior who lives in atlanta and he is gay but he's afraid to come out to his family and then he starts an online relationship with somebody and then he gets like blackmailed into a whole bunch of different things because he's not ready to come out and somebody finds out about his online relationship and they use the emails to blackmail him into doing all these things and it ends up turning into this like huge dramatic situation and again i did mention same-sex attraction as well but yeah longing sending messages back and forth that's what i said earlier with this like little ship it made me think about sending messages back and forth so there could be some definite messages for you in that movie love simon for sure but yeah this would just be a very juicy reading like if this person that you're thinking about got a reading on you it would be very juicy there would be a lot for them to say um i think that they <laughs> the details especially like the passionate details and the sexual details would be a lot of them but 
Yeah, especially when it comes to the idea of like being very quick to cut people off or um, not wanting, sometimes not wanting to talk or not wanting to um, be forthcoming with certain things, maybe being a little bit conniving, not necessarily manipulative, but a little bit conniving, you know, yeah, that would that's coming through too, for sure. This could be somebody that, you know, you're bringing back from the past. That's always possible with death and judgment here. That is like dredging up old feelings, dredging up old things. Somebody that you already knew, maybe that you thought was dead and gone. Not like literally dead, but like the connection was dead or something. It turns out that they've been pining for you this whole time. <laughs> Meaning you've been pining for them. Sorry. Again, the perspectives, they get a little crazy. But yeah, a tarot reader would tell them that you've been pining for them this whole time, for sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you got it, you got it bad. When you're on the phone, hang up and then you call right back. <laughs> you got it, you got it bad. If you miss a day, but that you bring your whole life's off track. Oh, you got it bad when you're out with someone and you keep on thinking about somebody got it bad. You said that you love it. I don't know why I really want to sing that whole song right now. That didn't even come out in the identifiers, 8701. I'm pretty sure that's where that song is from. That's Usher. The song is called You Got It Bad. <laughs> I'm just singing because it seems like you got it bad and the show reader would definitely tell them about it. Yeah, that is on the 8701 album. That did not come out in our identifiers, but it is coming up now. For sure, it is coming up now. I want to say that that came out in Pile 1. Did it? Am I wrong? Yeah, that did come out in Pile 1. Um, I don't know. There could be messages for you in Pile 1. Yeah, there could be messages for you in Pile 1, possibly about the same person. Don't forget to like this video, y'all. Put the little thumbs up. Go ahead and give that a click. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so we can be more connected. But yeah, this is all that I have for you guys in this reading. Like I said, some of you guys may want to check out Pile 1 um, if you have more questions about the same person. But yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I will see you in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.